Hello, Second Front fans. My name is Stu. I usually run an ASL channel, but with the advent of Second Front coming out, especially for Microprose, I used to play all those old games 500,000 years ago for Microprose. I jumping into the fray, seeing what this is all about. I've run through the tutorials. I've run through a couple simple scenarios. And now I'm on the Russian German uh scenario of the kiev is doomed so i've tried to play this a couple times and find out that my german infantry is just getting annihilated primarily i don't have enough there's just not enough german infantry and those damn snipers keep shooting my guys so i think this is the third time third time's the charm at this particular scenario so uh, what I'll do is I'll go through it like uh, many other content creators, give you a couple turns and then or maybe 45 minutes or so or what have you and um, and call it a turn by turn basis. And we'll go over what I try to do and some of the principles from ASL that I bring over into Second Front that I use that other content cre creators such as Neil Eulen from ASL Academy. He's done some good stuff and a lot of other good quality content creators have given you tips and tricks. Um, hopefully I could show you very similar things, maybe a couple extra things on, along the side. And other key pointers to, point, to uh, point out in this one here. One thing I discovered in the last one is the, um, the value of leaders in this specific scenario. So uh, not on the German side, mind you, but on the Russian side. So let's watch what happens when i try to take on the russian hordes that come in on that left hand flank i'm not sure what direction it is but it's on that side over there and uh let's see if i can manage them for the third time taking the buildings is the problem is just keeping your guys alive so let's see if i can improve my play on the third time all right so i'm going to pop right into it guys all right here's the scenario what I think you guys should do first, in my opinion, just based upon um, some of the play that I've been experiencing, you know, as we're learning how to uh, associate with the scenarios and associate with this new form here, um, I honestly don't play a lot of uh, uh, mechanizer or, uh, video game war games. There's a couple I play, but not very often. So anyway... The, you got your forces here. Your description is exactly the same in both boxes, so you really don't need to go to the description here. The picture is just a picture. Essentially, is the intro, the scenario type. This, in this instance, is just showing you both the objectives, the top and bottom that you have to capture. But here's the most important part here: the forces. And uh, there's a couple things we need to look at. Number one is uh this uh rating right here the, the all the red boxes what that means is when that thing is all red out the entire way to the right when your troops get fired upon they're more likely to become weakened which means they will go from veterans to line troops to green troops or from elites to veterans to line to green they're much more prone to do that the ammo that just means we don't have a ton of ammo and we don't have a uh, scarcity of ammo. So our ammo allotment for our vehicles, which would be like your APCR, your HE, in case you have just a, a weapon that only fires AP, and your smoke rounds, typically. Um, those change based upon, I'm not sure what the percentage changes by, maybe a pip on the die. So maybe anywhere between probably 12 and 15% on either side of that. So if you have if you have three tons of ammo, then what it does is if you're if if at ammo point two, let's say you've got smoke from your Stug three B, uh, actually it's at twenty seven percent. You see right here, twenty seven percent in this region right here. So I'm thinking that if it goes up to the plentiful ammo, that might drop down to seventeen percent, right? So you might have a lot more ammo. And you're not going to be depleted as well maybe 20 percent. and then if you're at low ammo that might actually increase to 35 percent or even higher so it probably goes up a stepwise so again most of this is probably based off a 2d6 uh game set and um 
So therefore, every point up or down is going to be a slightly different per, uh, percentage. So um, uh, you pretty much just want to see what type of reinforcements you have here. Um, I think the better interface, to be honest with you, uh, for this sort of orientation, like, okay, turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but it doesn't really show you on the map where they are. So what I'm going to do instead is this is just a general overlay about what troops you're having. Does it really show you where you're getting them, which is the most important thing. So looking at the Russians again, starting setups, you know, BA-20s, things like that. We'll, and uh, actually the starting setups won't show up on the map. So this is the point where you get the starting setups. As you see here, what can you tell me from this German setup? Turn one, turn two, turn four, turn one, turn two. Okay. That means the Germans don't, don't appear on the map. They don't show up on the map. They only come in as reinforcements. The Russians, however, they have a BA-20. They have a 37 millimeter. Most likely he'll be hidden, which means you can't see him on the screen. And he might remain hidden based upon, you know, dice rolls to keep him hidden when he shoots at you. Uh, T26, and in both games that I've played, he's been in the exact same spot, which is right in the middle of the, boat, the map. And as you see here, um, he can't fire when he's CE. And uh, I believe he's immobilized. So I'm not sure if this is updated or not. Um, but in my games, he doesn't move. He just spins and dies. 27 millimeter, 76 millimeter. That's a bad boy. And, um, and as you notice, if you guys are familiar with moving your guns, uh, although these are the um, AI, the computer player, uh, these are very important factors when you are playing more, probably more of a defensive game. It allows you the 4X, 3X, and 0X. The smaller the number, the easier it is to push it. Uh, 0X, pretty much you need to roll... Uh, you've got like a probably 87 or 95% chance of moving that, pushing that with either just a crew or a squad and a leader that might help you. 25 millimeter and a 76 millimeter are pretty equivalent. Again, based on the dice curve on the, on the bell curve with 2d6, you know, essentially these are modifiers three. Um, so you, that means you need to roll a nine or less to move it. And the, and the exist, uh, three the 76 millimeter is like an eight so these this is, might be like a 58 percent chance to move this is probably a 64 percent chance to move because they're bigger weapons harder to move and there's no towing quite yet so they will have towing i'm sure uh for the longer scenarios and then it shows you the reinforcements here and also it, the the vehicles and the guns and the infantry are separated so this might get confusing it's like well What's coming on when? Uh, I don't know what's going on, Stu. What's what the hell's going on? So if you look at turn one, you've got one truck. That's it. Oh, Stu, I get a truck. Big deal. Yeah, but I think it might be carrying these guys. And again, that might be just a single vehicle. And then these guys are kind of walking on board. This is 11 squads, by the way. And uh, things to point out on the 11 squads, we'll point out actually in the game. Uh, I just want to check the guys that are on the map right now. You have a crew, and then you have your four green units here. Uh, an 82 millimeter mortar. Oh, these guys are set up on the map. Wow. I don't remember seeing the 82 millimeter mortar, to be honest with you. A uh, medium machine gun, same, the same spot. And they have two leaders. One shitty leader, one crappy leader right here. That means the minus X means uh, he acts, he's actually deterrent or detriment to his troops. Uh, the one big thing about a particular like this leader is, is, um, is uh, you know, the differences between these two, one essentially adds one to your dice rolls, which is bad. And then his morale is based upon one of these insignias of this color, being a morale seven. This means he's below the seven morale. He's like a six morale unit. So you, for him to pass a morale check, if you shoot on him, uh, he'd have to roll six or less on two dice. This guy needs to roll an eight or less because if one is base seven, 
He had another one. It's like he's got an eight morale. So that's what you need to roll on, quote, two dice that the computer's doing for you. And so when you try to figure out, okay, why doesn't Baranovsky break all the time? But Glasgow, I mean, somebody spits at him in the left, in the wrong direction, and he's breaking all the time. That's because that's how the morale is, is, is described or categorized in the game. Snipers. These are your biggest problem in this game. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're in. You're in a vehicle, whatever. Snipers are important. And I'm, uh, I'll also go over how to counter the snipers. Uh, big, big deal. Uh, things to look at. Well, we've only got one crew here. Not sure why there's only one crew. That should be three. Because we have three crewed vehicles here. And there should be one for each. So there should be a three right here. I'm sure that's an error. Four green units. Uh, I don't know if that's close or not. But, um, but we'll go into that. And the other guys are just reinforcements. Turn one. Comes on with a truck. Turn two, which is all these guys. You got Mer 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 Merkushev. Merkushev is like a, an eight minus one leader. Uh, uh, Vasilev is like a regular leader. His gray star means he doesn't modify uh, any of the dice rolls, but he does give other benefits. Call uh, Blukov, another bad leader, but he does allow units to move fast which is what's the big bonus about them we'll also go into what these leaders can do during the game because controlling your leaders in the in the game in this tactical feel is a very important part especially for the russians because the germans are just going to be shooting guys left and right they're going to be breaking them you have to win the game by killing these these infantry units and it's important to break them as you could tell you know turn one units most of them are green He's got that crappy, crappy morale, so it's going to be easy. It should be easy to break these units overall. Uh, this is a regular troop, and uh, things that we can uh, look between them. And uh, I'll describe these again, sort of as the reinforcements come on, and to judge to see how much of a threat they are to either our infantry or our armored vehicles. So, um, uh, eighty-two millimeter mortars, turn five. I usually lose the game by turn five, got to be honest with you. Uh, and again, you have our troops up here. As you can see, uh, Lieutenant Neumann, uh, he's got an extra bonus morale. So technically, he's one above the normal of seven. So he's like an eight. Neither of them have any leadership modifiers. But we do have six elite half squads because there's only two guys on the counter. And nine veteran half squads. These elite squads can can take a little bit more damage because the morale's higher. And then we have just a rando elite guy. I'm not sure what this... Oh, his range is different. So uh, he's like a special... Uh, maybe he's used for the mini machine gun. I don't know. But um, so anyway, he's a special, uh, slightly different type of unit. The uh, elite units here, three firepower. Very good. Most of your half squads are two firepower as you see here. Compare this to some of the Russians you might be getting a deal with, right? Four firepower, four firepower, four firepower. So our half squads here are pretty, almost equivalent to a Russian squad in terms of firepower. So um, that's that. So we've got weak leaders here. Turn one leaders. We don't really have any leaders, do we? And I think that's a glitch as well. I do think we do have a turn one leader. Uh, maybe not. But as you see, we have three leaders total of the game. Not very much. Not very much. Important to manage our leaders as well. So, uh, all right, Stu, shut up. Let's get to the game and uh, let's check out what's going on. So I don't want to unlock all. So let's go to the game. So I'll stop this. I'm going to play. Uh, did I just screw that up? Yeah. Play down the bottom. It takes a while. Again, the general <clears throat> scenario info. It has your experience rating here, which means we don't really want, even though we're elite units, we really don't want to be taking many shots because if we fail uh, our morale checks or fail our checks against the enemy fire, we're more likely to be decreased in fighting ability which means our elite units will likely go to veteran veterans going to uh first line or green 
and so our quality of troops will diminish uh, quicker quicker than the Russian, surprisingly. And uh, as you see here, the Russian ammo is low. So uh, I'm not sure if we can highlight them and it shows the percentage of their ammo, but we'll take a look. So theoretically, most of the Russian ammo, like say the 76 millimeter anti-tank gun, I think it might be an infantry gun, but the ZIS-3, it, um, it will have, if it has special ammunition like APCR, it will have a higher incidence of depletion. Whereas our vehicles and our armaments will have a normal incidence of depletion. So let's go ahead and continue. East of Kiev, September 16th in the year 41. Okay, new reinforcements have arrived. Again, let's take a look at what we see on the map. Oh, there's the 81 millimeter more. So um, we're coming on the left and right, but how do we determine who's who in that whole shebang? All the Russians come on this fort, on this uh, location here. They don't come on anywhere else on the map. So taking it from a bird's eye view, we'll go over what these concealments mean in case you guys haven't seen 300 other videos. I'm going to assume you have it, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to cover something that the other guys have it, or uh, maybe maybe I could try to remember what they've covered. But again, typically your upper center is just where your scenario detail is. Uh, that can be kind of just ignored after a while. This is your line of sight tool, as you well know, and that is based upon any location that you select what the line of sight is from there. So for, from right at the entry hex here, those are the hexes that can see us when we enter. Let's say we go to this location. All the, the locations will change as we move along. So if you suspect, let's say my last game, there was an anti, the 25 millimeter uh, anti-aircraft gun was right here. So that's all what he can see. Look how far he can see to the right. That's actually a really really good spot for that weapon um it has hindrances in both directions but it's overall is pretty decent it can cover one of the objectives which is right here which has one hell of a view the other objective well it's a building each hex of the building has different lines of sight because that's the third level location that could see everything guess where the sniper is going to be right there guess where the sniper is going to be right there because it could see like half the map right here you can see the rest of the map. You can see all the units that are going to be in those uh, wheat fields. And um, so you can kind of plot what you're going, what fire you're going to be exposed to, let's say if you drove down the road. So once you hit the top of the hill, you actually, there's not really a lot of units that could see you, even if they are on the hill, from once you entered. So that's a relatively, quote, safe location for... Um, particular units to maybe uh be it's not a terrible spot to be but um so let's take a look at uh the vps of this scenario to see how we're gonna how we're gonna win this thing or how we're gonna lose it as the case may be of course your question mark um player help menu this is absolutely fantastic interface it is written quite quite clearly describes the phases the actions uh, most of the, well, yeah, most of these actions are going to be available to you. There will be a few that will not be. Vehicle, general vehicle um, information here. Uh, we'll go through this during the game as well. Infantry, history, things like that. We'll kind of go over some of the, the features as well. Weapons. Uh, I wish it actually showed the firepower of the weapons, but um, we could check into that in just a, a couple minutes. Actually, we'll take, take a look at that in a couple minutes. And then it just talks about the uh, the markers that show up on the units, you know, grain, things like that, modifiers for shooting in a stone building, uh, hindrances such as grain, gunfire, when the guns are firing, these are all the modifiers that will show up on your gun charts as your pop-ups, and then your results. Your results are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, some, some of the things like uh, toughen, what does that mean? That means your unit becomes a higher quality unit and uh weaken is just the opposite to become a weaker quality unit and the rest of them are pretty much self-explanatory uh terrain is great you have to understand how the terrain works 
and we can cover that as well as it approaches and you guys know the keyboard stuff so so victory conditions let's take a look at those this is the most important thing in the game this is the thing you have to keep focused on and luckily most of them are very simplified uh we actually just cover the victory Capture the victory locations before any of them gets to turn zero. Uh, this is a lengthy scenario. And once you capture a victory location, the time for that location stops and ceases. So it's turns of which the Russian player, or in this case, the defender, maintains possession of that uh, location. So if it's 180, 180 victory points, it will keep it for 18 turns. That's a long time. Um, usually it doesn't even get close to that. So, uh, the computer, it says right here, the, the computer will try to recapture victory point locations until your infantry force, and again, we don't have much, is at least 10, 1.0 times as strong as the computer's infantry force. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate that before we start. And, um, we'll go in the calculation on exactly where we need to be based upon um, casualties. So you have captured zero of two and um, your force uh, is at least one times as strong as the enemy's, as the computer's force. Right now, where are we at? Point one. So we're at 10% of the enemy's strength. So I'm not sure if that includes reinforcements. I'm pretty sure it does. So we're at 10%. What does that mean? That means, let's say he has uh, 20, 20 infantry units, right? And we that means we have 10% of his force. That means we have essentially equivalent to two infantry units. We have to get those forces to be at least 1.0, which is the same strength. So that means we need to kill 18 squads and not lose anybody to get to that point. Now, of course, if we have 10, he, he might, you know, he might have a hundred, but I'm not sure if it calculates it. Well, I think it's just full numerical point values. So we're going to try and calculate that to see how it works. So, um, let's go ahead and take a look at what forces we have coming on. Uh, to do that, I learned this yesterday, click on the arrow and that will tell you, you could actually expand that a little more doesn't really collapse it too much and you can't drag it, but this is pretty much, this is everything that's going to be coming on the left hand. Well, the left hand, that side, um, reinforcement area. So it's going to be coming on this side here on the left hand side. So on turn one, we're having two armored cars. They both have 20 millimeters. And then we also have two 35 T's with 37 millimeters. And then we also have the Stug 3B. This is this is the big boy of the game. Uh, you need to protect this, and you need to protect it well. It doesn't have any machine guns, so you don't want any infantry to get close to this thing, because most of the time you're going to have to operate buttoned up because you can't afford to lose it. It has the most armor. It has almost twice as much armor as all of our other vehicles. So we'll go and compare this Stug um, as we take a look at the game in comparison to the enemy forces. So the other units we could look at, but the Stug 3B is what we're going to take a look at specifically. So again, this is all in part in, in knowing what your troops can handle. Can my Panzer SW, PSW-222 handle a 25 millimeter anti-tank gun? Can it handle a machine gun? You know, um, how fast can it go? Things like that. So, um, you see up here, the big numbers in the upper right is the speed of the unit on in game turns play. So different terrain will alter that speed, but pretty much it's an armored car. It's going to go fast, big tank, not so fast. So, um, and on turn two, so turn one, five vehicles, that's it. Turn two, two leaders, and then two, two splits of elites and veteran half squads. And one medium so you can split those up uh mm, i think the elites and the mediums come out at the same time but we could play around with this as well and the other location over here what do we see turn one these are all these are all half tracks 
The 251, the only thing it has on it is an anti-aircraft machine gun, and it's pretty weak. So it's a troop transport. It's only a half squad troop transport because there's only two figures that you see right up here. The two figureheads, that's its capacity. That's it. So, but it could be very useful because it's very fast. The S the 250-10, 37 millimeter gun on it. What is this good for? Blowing up infantry and taking down light armor vehicles, which all the Russian vehicles are light armor. Uh, it does not have any carrying capacity. Now, um, this vehicle is small because of this red dot, small. Red means it's bad for them to hit you, to target you. It's like a targeting, and red's bad. The double red over here on the Kubel wagon means it's very small, which means it's got a essentially a too small size target. It's very poor to hit that unit, but it moves very fast and it can carry two units, two um, a squad of two, well, not a squad, but a half squad. And when we see it, we'll see what's coming on with that. Uh, this is simply just a PS222 on the other side, 2F as well, same thing. Actually, this is a little bit weaker than the other one, so. Um, and it has the smoke dispensers use your smoke dispensers period we'll, well hopefully i'll be able to show you how to use them effectively to help protect your troops okay and then we have turn four and i'm not sure why it's scrolling but turn four oh uh, there we go oh uh, it's a panzer camp wagon 4c good infantry support weapon it's got a big infantry support gun on it um, not really a lot of AP on it, but it's got a lot of, uh, high explosive ammo. It blows guys out of buildings like you don't believe. Oh, here's, here's a little troop. Turn one veteran units. Infantry is separate. And turn two is just nothing but infantry. And, uh, I'm not a big fan of how it splits it like that. Not sure why, but, um, as long as you kind of piece it together, like turn two here, Kubo wagon with these guys here. One leader for nine units. That's that's not so good. You have one leader on this side of the map. What does that mean? I'll tell you exactly what that means when we get to that. All right. So big time preliminary stuff. Uh, one more thing I want to go over. Look at the, uh, all, uh, if you remember the units, the 2F, 222, 257, 251, 250, 10, right? Now... Let's take a look at the garage, and um, and I wish can we go from here? Uh, no, we can't go from the garage from here. I don't think. The garage would be a very useful tool in the game at this point, instead of having maybe it's the scenario. No, let's go take a look at the garage. Uh, let's come meet me at the garage, and we'll take a look at the comparison between the vehicles and what we expect to be exposed to. All right, let's go out to the garage. All right, get your uh, gloves on. We're going to compare the units, and this is what the garage is very useful for. So we, at this point, again, we have to remember what units we have. And um, hey, let's see what happens. These 2F35T. We had a couple of units. There's a check mark, which means they're like they've been included in a game. Maybe this is what I had before. Uh, 20 millimeters of 37. No, it doesn't. So anyway, um, let's take a look at the Russian artillery pieces. So he's got a 37 millimeter. Okay. So we're going to set that off on this side over here. And then for the Germans, let's set up, let's say our half track, our 25010. Okay. This is the comparison that we have to look at. We've got our uh, 37 millimeter. So at a range, let's just say a range of uh, seven to eight. Okay. It tells you the ammo type. And a lot of times, sometimes these weapons over here do not have armor, excuse me, armor piercing, but it just displays it in armor piercing for some reason. Um, uh, it might be a depletable ammo, but for the armor piercing at this weapon, at a range of 7 to 18, you notice it doesn't change at all until you get super close. So let's do a range of 3 to 6, because that's the same as 7 to 18, and for the most part in this scenario, that's like the entire map. So follow the color, Russian color, goes over, 
and it shows you the effectiveness against this unit when it's when it's hitting it. So 71%, it will take it out if it hits the top turret. 71% uh, if it hits the front hull. 84% if it hits the side top, side top or turret, the upper structure in this case it doesn't have a turret, or side hull, and the rear is exactly the same. So the 37 millimeter, even though it looks like a little small gun, it could take it out. Now let's compare that 25 millimeter gun that he has. This little guy right here, that's the 25 millimeter. Look at the percentages here, 61%, 71%. Pretty much the same thing, very effective. And then this, the 76 Zeus, if he hits you, he's gonna blow you up, 97% chance. So knowing that when these units fire upon you and they have a t potential to hit you, what's the best way to avoid destruction? One is use of terrain which minimizes lines of sight, even though you may not know where they are. And B, hindrances, like great, the, all the grain field. You see the grain field right at the beginning? That's what you have to take, you, take use of. You know, make use of that grain in the beginning. The, uh, the brush, I think it's called the uh, low trees or brush on the right side, um, you could take advantage of that as well. So those will decrease the chance of weapons like this and hitting your vehicles and your infantry to a point where you don't have to worry about the 97% because he's simply not going to be able to hit you. Okay. So, and let's take a look at our armor. That's our German, our vaunted, our, our vaunted German armor. So we've got our Panzer 2F. Say, oh, we got our tanks. We got four armor in the front. We've got this made. Gets the 76. No, nope, Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. Let's try um, our 222. We had a 222 right here. Swiss cheese. Hit, dead, hit, dead, hit, dead. Okay. Let's look at that stug. Where's that stug that we had? Oh, assault gun. Stug 3B. That's got the most armor. We have like seven armor on this thing. What does the 76 millimeter Zist do? Very, very long gun. It blows a hole in the front of that armor. So guess what? When this thing shows up on the map, you avoid it like the plague. The plague. You do not go near it. It will destroy you. And look at the reload rate. 33% chance to reload right here. Which means every time it fires, it's going to have a decent chance of firing again. But, um, so yeah. But, let's take a look of the other Russian guns. Again, we're just going to focus on the Stug because I showed you that the 222 of the half tracks, very low armor. Let's take a look at the Stug and see how it fares. And here's where you have to determine good matchups in your game. Again, this thing punches a hole in it like there's no tomorrow. Let's check the 25 millimeter, see what it does. Did you see and did you notice a difference? We have an 89% penetration rate with a 76 millimeter, which means it's, it's, it's God mode. 25 millimeter, as long as we're facing the front, we face the front, drive straight at it. It's got very, very low chance of destroying us. The sides, because our armor is weaker, as you see that it's a four armor, decent chance. Front armor is almost twice as thick as the side. Very low chance. And rear, slightly better. And let's try that 37 millimeter. Where's that anti-tank guy? I think it's in the front. 37 millimeter up here. Look at the kill percentage there. It's double the 25 at the same range. 12% low, but it can happen. Does it change at seven? No. And it changes at 19, but that's probably too far for us to either side to be effective anyway. So I'll leave it at three to six. So again, 12% on 37. So what does that mean? When this anti-tank gun shows up or the anti-aircraft shows up, this bad boy, when you button up and you will button up, oh, German assault gun. We do want to button up, oh, don't pull guys on we want to button up so he doesn't take take our infantry out, our commander out. Once we button up, 
this thing is probably not going to pop us before we take him out. Look at our kill percentage. If we can hit him, he'll be neutralized 89% of the time. 89, 12. That's like going all in in poker with aces. It's actually better. I'm going all in with aces. This thug is all in against these bad boys. That's something that we need to focus on. So this is something that will react to these armor. Maybe take your fast vehicles and then this thing can react to it. Very slow in terms of trying to focus in on hone in on things. But once it's there, it's an assault. It's called an assault gun for a reason. And we're going to try, hopefully try and demonstrate that. The vehicles, uh, I got to be honest with you, I try to blow up trucks and they're like invulnerable. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. We're going to try and explain that during the game as well. So anyway, all right. Uh, that's just a good introduction right now. So with that, uh, uh, we'll go and we'll do turn one. And I'll show you exactly how we're going to approach this. Again, um, take use of what terrain you have to avoid and, um, and what terrain you want to be very deep in to protect units at the best opportunity. So go clean up, go take a shower. We're working hard in the garage and let's go back out with your army greens. All right, we're back on the back on the screen. So order, look what we have in front of a, both of our units. Um, let me rotate over. The order in which you move these units is it's wholly up to you. So what do we see on the map right now? We see, let me reduce that. We don't see anybody, well, maybe. Yep. We see a lone unit up here. Let me get zoom in on this guy. Sniper. So one of his snipers is on the top tower. And when you look at when you look at this this figure here, what do you see? You see um, boxes, hidden units that you can't identify. And they don't have an outer box on this. So that means these guys are on the ground floor. Okay. This guy is orange. He is on the second level. Do you see this orange part right here? That's orange. So therefore this unit is on the second or the, the first level right above there. And then on the bottom level, let me get, zoom in a little bit. On the bottom level of these two guys, you noticed how that unit on the orange level disappeared? Excuse me. So he's not there, and look what we have in here. You could kind of you can kind of cheat. He's got a medium machine gun. He's got a he's got a leader as well. This this is an officer. So he's got a leader, medium machine gun, probably a squad, and a sniper. Right? So uh Right there, we know one of his leaders is over here on this side. What is this? This is his, his mortar. Um, the mortar actually doesn't play that much of a part in the game. I always blow them the crap up. So here's our T26. That was in the game. And again, it doesn't show you any information on it. I think it's considered immobilized. What do we have here? We have we have a unit that is, doesn't have any outer covering. So he's on the ground level, which we could actually visually detect, right? And I love these buildings. These buildings are great. So at the top level, at the third level, because that's red, red is the third level. So it's first, essentially first is the bottom or ground level, first and then second level. So at the top of this tier is the other sniper. So he's got a little sniper. You can't see, I don't want to spin it around, but he's got a little sniper rifle right there. Who's on the second level? Nobody. All right? And the bottom level? The squad. So it's, he's probably just protecting the sniper. In the middle here, what do you think's on the top? Yep. Sniper. Okay. And then nobody's on, the, on the, that level, and we have a protective crew on the bottom. And there's your BA-6 right there, which is pretty much just a little weak, weak machine gun tank. But don't take it for granted because it is still armored to an extent. And what else do we have? Right down here in the little corner, we have a little leader. So his leader is here in the central building. His other leader is in the other building. Which means, and we're going to get to this in tactics, guys. 
We're going to cover some tactics. This might go a little slow, but I want to cover some tactics for you. These guys have no leader. So if you break these guys, and let's say you park the tank over here on this gray spot, he's not going to route into the direction to that leader because that's where he wants to go. He's going to have to go this way or just stay in the building or not go to the leader, which makes it far more difficult for him to rally to come back at us. That is the key of this scenario. There are no other units on the map except for the three anti uh, or the three guns, the 25 millimeter, which is fairly decent against our units, except for our stug. Uh, the 37 millimeter, fairly decent against our units, except the stug. And the 76, which is God mode. Okay. Uh, in my experience, the 76, in my two butt kickings that I've been receiving, it's been here every single time. So, honestly, you never practically ever want to go down a, a dirt road free and clear. You're just asking for trouble. Um, but uh, you've got a big giant wheat field here. That's what you want to take advantage of. Okay. Plus, we have our reinforcements over here that we could look at, right? Let's see. So turn one, we covered this before. It's all. It's going to be all that armor there. And it's going to be like one half squad. So pretty interesting. Turn two, mainly infantry. So your armor is going to come on. Hopefully draw some fire, whatever. And then our infantry is going to come on behind that on the ground. Um, not sure why. And then of course, of course, turn four, our Panzer IV comes on. So pretty much all of our armor comes on first turn of the game. And that's it. Most of our stuff comes on turn one, turn two. And the Russians, let's look at the Russians. Again, you have to understand this before you could plan your game. The Russians are brutal. Pretty much turn one comes on a truck and a slew of infantry. 11 squads will show up here and they'll just move out, which means they're going to move to the victory locations. If we could set up our units, again, because we know they come on here, and they're going to move down this road, theoretically, the easiest way to travel to get to the victory conditions here. So if we could bring all of our armor to, say, this location, or maybe this location, then we could shoot all those infantry units before they get to the buildings. That's the whole kicker. You don't want to just drive this way or drive up the middle, because if you drive up the middle and, and take the town here, we don't have any infantry, so to speak. All of our guys are half squads. All of these guys are full squads. He has 11 coming in on turn one. Turn two, he has nine more coming in. Turn three, he has nine more. And turn four, I don't care about the crew. We're either going to have won the game by then or not. Or we're turn five. So he has, what, 11, 29 reinforcing squads 29 all right so let's take that into consideration how do i get rid of this oh this is a uh there we go. 29 let's cut up how many how many we have this is full squads mind you we have a half squad exciting and then we have nine and a half squads so that's 10 half squads. So we have five squads of equivalent if we combine them all. We have five squads on this side. And let's see what we have on this side. Six half squads, which is equivalent to three. The enemy has about 34 squads. We have eight. So we have to kill um like 24 squads before we get that ratio needed of the enemy infantry force and that includes in my opinion i think that also includes the crews of the guns that you have to destroy well maybe not have to destroy but so your infantry force has to be on par with the enemy infantry force he's got 34 squads we have eight We've got to whittle them down, and we're going to get shot by the snipers. So we're going to be losing troops. 
we have to preserve our infantry to keep that number down. Armor doesn't take fall into place. We could lose all the armor we want. The infantry have to die. Okay? They have to get down to here. And then we take the buildings. Okay? Again, if you're taking the buildings, and it says the enemy infantry will continue to fight as long as they have that advantage. So if you occupy this building with your few troops, and this is another strategy you could use, um, let's not worry about the points. Well, what you could do is you could take one building, and then it will stop that one from ticking down. And then at that point, he may send some troops to counterattack because guess what? He is below the infantry threshold, so he will counterattack with his infantry. Same thing with the center building. Counterattack with the infantry. So that's what we're looking at. Again, 34 to 8. At least 34 to 8. And he's got three snipers. So we're going to try and figure out how to deal with the snipers um, as soon as we set up the game. But I just want this to be an intro. I'll start the game in the next video. Um, this is kind of how you want to look at the game, what, where your reinforcements are coming from, what terrain can I use to keep those, those reinforcements alive. And that's about as obvious as you can get. You want, you want a wheat field here. What does the enemy have and where are they coming on and when are they coming on? How much they have? Can I do anything about it? Do I want to avoid that? Don't know. And then over here on this other side, our other reinforcements, what's the timing of them coming on, right? Do they come on sooner? Do they come on later? Uh, is there something uh, game-breaking in here that I can use? The Stug is the game-breaker. The Stug is the game-breaker in this one here. And probably the HMG. And uh, But we'll go, after, we'll go over those. So we're not going to move right now. So we'll go over lines of sight later on. Uh, we did a little bit earlier, but that's what we're looking at. His guns could be anywhere. I'll just tell you where I've, I've experienced where the guns have been in the two playings. A uh, gun over here on this side. The 76 has been here every single time. The 37 was here in the first game that I played. In the second game, the 37 was like um, uh, in the building right here. It was actually a pretty good spot in the building right in the front. So there are a number of spots expected to be firing as soon as you should come up. Okay. So we'll go over what we need to do. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too long. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy the content. Uh, I, again, I just wanted to bring this from a tactical point of view. I have uh, some experience in ASL. And this is pretty much a mirror of ASL in terms of knowing what's effective. Knowing what you can get away with. And knowing how to manipulate the enemy's fire, as Neil had pointed out in his ASL Academy videos about defensive fire strategies, um, that is key. Some other content creators have also done that. Check those videos out, and we're going to also exemplify that here during the gameplay. But that is a that is a primary concept that you have to understand. How to draw their fire so your other troops don't get shredded on the, in the meantime. If I want to go to the left, I don't want to send my best troops there first. I want to send essentially some scouts. So, but we'll go into that. So we'll catch you next time on Stu's Replay. Thanks for watching.